This is really a great pleasure to address this August gathering. And many of the faces are known. And to be with you as a government official statistician, I have been nicely introduced by Roshan. So nothing more to add. Uh, today's uh, presentation, I will have a small presentation and then we can discuss any questions, any queries. Uh, and you know, in the restructure organization, I'm not only working in DGFT, now in the uh, data analytics and commercial intelligence, uh, there is a TIA wing open in the restructure department of commerce. So with, you are all stakeholders, we are all official stakeholders, and the exports, and particularly SME exports, is the main focus for today's discussion. Distinguished panelists, and in advance, I compliment the organizers and the financial space digital editor, file, everybody to make it happen, and thank you again for inviting me for this uh, inaugural address. Thank you. So, already some hints have been given that this is the India's export vision. Sometimes it looks very high, but you know, vision should be very high. It should be ambitious. Otherwise, what you will achieve? So, one trillion exports, each in goods and services by 2030, and the participation of MSMEs in the trade, you know, enhancing the participation, becoming an integral part of global value chains. That is uh, most talked about nowadays after this, you know, the recent crisis. Global value chain, India has a, a very strong global value chain and we have to enhance further. Branding India as a supplier of high value and high growth products and leveraging innovation and technology for scaling of production and export. So uh, I'll not bore the audience and the distinguished uh, experts and panels, uh, uh, panelists here, uh, because my first few slides will be in general about export targeting, monitoring, and the background. And then I will come directly to SMA's uh, role and SMA exports. That is the main topic for today. So as you know, and we all are part of it, exports as engineer of growth, you see the story from the world over. Here, uh, uh, like Singapore, Taiwan, South Korea, you see, uh, these are, they have export-led growth and focused on export have grown faster. Because if they uh, emphasize export, so they don't have natural resources, but still they are at high level. China is a classic example of labor-intensive goods, particularly high-tech goods and the mass scale of production and export. That's why the most surplus country in the Southeast Asia, Vietnam is aggressively, they are just FTAs with developed countries and you know, we are competitors also in some respect. Exports have deep backward linkages that everybody know all of you agree that it creates jobs, support the manufacturing sector, support MSMEs, farmers, improve standards, quality, scale of production, and increase foreign exchange earn earning, currency stability, investment impact. Those, those things are there. So this shows how important is export sector. But as uh, already mentioned, so these are the current challenges, but these are all, you know, any challenge is just a temporary phase. It's not going to stay forever. But we have to face the challenge, like in our own life, own career, everywhere we face challenges. Now, these are the global challenges, and this is really a concern. And with these challenges, we have to face our export growth, and particularly SMA growth, export. IMF global Growth is forecast to slow from 6% to 3.2%. See, in the quick succession, in 2021, they forecasted 
6.0, now the forecast is 3.2, and now 2.7, you see, if the forecast is sliding in this way, we don't know what is going to happen, the real GDP or the world economy. WTO has projected global trade growth. You know, World Trade Organization is specialized for this, and 1% 2023, as Ocean has already told, it's really a matter of concern. But we, we think it is still pessimistic. That's my personal view. As 3.5% uh, 2022, means 21, 22, uh, 22, 23. Lingering back drop of Russia-Ukraine conflict, supply chain disruption, uncertainty, high inflation rate, low growth in many developing, developed countries like recession trends already set in USA, UK, European Union, and most of our exports are going there, so we are concerned for that. Because if the recession is there, then their uh, demand, consumer demand will be less. Once the consumer demand is less, their import will be less, their import is less, means our export will be less. So that is the simple chain. And the foreign exchange crisis, as you know, in recent times with Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, we have uh, Pakistan. So foreign exchange crisis is also a worried factor. Uh, all of you are aware of this, but being a statistician and official statistician, I'll highlight, because unless we know our past, we don't know our future. So the present assessment. So, and it's all a positive growth story. Uh, to, from last year, uh, by, uh, I'll focus on the last column, where 21-22, uh, it was the highest ever export achievement because of target 400 and prime minister's push. But now, uh, April to December, we are also going to achieve more than the uh, uh, you know, record target. So we have already achieved uh, till December, but I'll give you the overall data for January, but this presentation prepared that. So till December, this is the result that uh, from 305 exports, we have already achieved 332 by December, but uh, specifically mentioned, it is uh, uh, by January, it is three, uh, uh, last year, uh, January it was not, uh, both merchandise and services, it was 669. But in fact, because of the revised figures from DGCIS, Director General of Commercial Intelligence, that's my organization also, uh, you know, we achieved $676 billion, uh, both uh, put together. And in, uh, so trade deficit has increased because uh, our economy is highly consumer oriented, highly demanding, so imports are necessary. And uh, that's why trade deficit is little higher, but nothing to worry about that. And if you put merchandise and services together in the last 10 years, there's a tremendous performance. So 546.95, uh, you know, uh, in the import, Import has uh, gone, uh, increased to 686. And export, because today's focus is export of 489.69 to 56857, that is till April to December 2022. Now, how will we achieve? We have a target of 1 trillion in goods and services. How will we achieve that? So here are some statistical projection we have made that if you grow like CAGR in goods 11.5% and services 18.9%. Here CAGR goods 11.5% looks little high, but time may come. But services we are already in this range. So that I'll come to after some time. So. If you see the merchandise, if you grow uh, in that speed, 11.5% CAGR rate, then from 422 of last year, we can go up to 1 trillion. It's not a big one. But the 
big one is this one from 254 to 1 trillion because the way services tra uh, trade is going on, trade in services, the growth rate, now we have 17% uh, last uh, till April to January. So having 18.9% is not a big one, but you know, ambitions should be high enough to achieve and to pursue the goals. So overall, we'll have 200, and these statistics, these are only projections. It's not the, uh, nothing to be serious about. Approach to export target, now I'm coming directly to my core competency, where I am working on it uh, for the first time. In 2021-22, we had the uh, target setting for 200 countries by 31 commodity groups, with all these, uh, you know, uh, granularity. And then this, year, uh, this current year also we have done, but it is uh, provisional. And uh, coming year, I have just started this week. Here, just the approach uh, to that, that everybody can know. So, Mr. Bivhiar Subramanyam joined in 1st July, 2021. The first thing he did is to call all the Joint Secretary, Additional Secretary, Statistical Advisor, Economic Advisor of the Ministry. And we started on workshop mode under his guidance. Uh, the target, of course, target 400 is reached after a lot of iterations. The target was set based on the performance of the last three years, broken up, segregated by regions and countries. I told you just 200 countries by 31 commodity groups grouped into all territorial and commodity divisions of Department of Commerce. There are 10 territorial divisions and nine commodity divisions, and they all are grouped into this, and then for each 6,200 sales, we prepare first time the export target. And export promotion councils were also given, although there is not one-to-one -one correspondence between these 31 commodity groups, and the export promotion councils, but targets were fixed for each of the commodity groups. The focus was on existing and new markets, existing and new products, lost market share because of the COVID, you know, it was 291 uh, during the COVID year. So to imagine 400 plus, in fact, it was 414, the target was uh, initially drawn and people uh, uh, um, both in the government and in the private and the media were mimicking me sometimes. 400 plus from 291, it never happened, but it happened. And uh, all credit goes to the exporters, the EPCs, you people, the leaders, CII, FICI, FIO, everybody, we only facilitated, only seriously monitored the performance every week, every month. And the big push given by our Honorable Minister, Mr. Pius Goel, as well as Honorable Minister, Prime Minister. And, and this was the kickstart, some of uh, us now uh, known face, I think we met there in Osoka Hotel. The kickstart happened by Honorable Prime Minister with all missions, because one thing I want to make it very clear, exports is external sector. Import of other countries, it's an external sector of the economy. Unless the Ministry of External Affairs and Department of Commerce join together and work towards it, nothing will happen. So this happened, and with that object in mind, Honorable Prime Minister addressed the entire gathering and uh, almost all the stakeholders of exports. And in August 2021, we prepared everything and uh, 200 missions consulate, 35 EPCs, boards, 30 departments, SCJ, CEO, CIA, FICI, PhD, Chamber of Commerce, many I have not written, state governments, everybody participated. This energized the system and enabled the coordinated, focused attention on all fronts. For the first time, target setting was done by DOC and specific targets given to all missions and EPCs 
and we do pursue on weekly and monthly basis. All territorial division, joint secretary, additional secretary, were having, uh, you know, uh, VCs with uh, their counterparts, the missions, ambassadors, and uh, many duolators were sent from Vivya Subramanian, now who he is uh, again now Niti Aayog CEO, and the result is the historic high achievement of export of US for 22 billion, and that's the history. And this is something for our internal, but for the benefit of this large gathering, August gathering, I'm sharing, but this is not for the public consumption. This is only internal monitoring. I'm again writing that uh, for internal monitoring purpose, this target was fixed, and why it was not publicly announced? Because you know the year is full of full of uncertainties. That's why. Followed the similar approach and methodology this year with learning lessons from the earlier one. Two rounds of discussions were held with each mission and EPCs at multiple levels to finalize the targets at minister level, at secretary level, at DGFT level, at uh, every uh, territorial division, commodity division heads with EPCs, missions, uh, like to set this ambitious target of 470 after achieving 422. Because the baseline, you know, the base was very high, so it is very difficult to achieve this, but still we made this ambitious target for our own. And the assessment of this year's ESPO target is based on this 15 years of the maximum value of the four years, and of course, it will be 21 only. Uh, COVID lockdown situation, then Russia, Ukraine, uh, you know, the conflict, prolonged conflict, then shipping line, container availability, uncertainty that you people are more aware of it uh, that we face. So, ESPO target for goods and services put together. First time services target was fixed. That was fixed as 280, and I'm confidently telling you we are going to. Uh, you know, across this target, uh, uh, 750 taken together. In addition to this rigorous monthly monitoring and follow-up action for 200 countries by 31 commodity groups at multiple level, a national import-export record for yearly analysis of trade that is called NIRIA third form portal was launched by Honorable, again developed by us in the export monitoring unit. We were sharing these uh, export monitoring seeds to all embassies, uh, 231, uh, you know, EPCs. But now uh, they can have this uh, with login uh, password. We I provided to all. Uh, um, I, I think all of you have got it. And then we made it also public, as announced by Prime Minister. So uh, this was launched on third, 23rd June. Uh, 22 when my current office, Banijya Bhavan, was inaugurated on that same day. Honorable Prime Minister inaugurated both. This is just, uh, I'll not go through it. This is how we had this target in 22-23, that based on the four years achievement and how the targets were fixed, 470 for merchandise targets, for each of these 10 regional Regions, we call it territorial divisions of Department of Commerce. Then I'm giving you the summary, but there are 200 countries and all within this. Then for commodity-wise target setting, it was again the same, like agricultural, is agriculture, uh, uh, you know, commodity division is there. So all these commodities come under agriculture, EP marine, export promotion marine, export promotion cap, uh, leather, gems jewelry, pharma, engineering, and electronics. And you know, electronics, uh, we are already uh, achieved our target. And uh, these are the ways we fix the target and we monitor. There is a monitoring sheet. I'm not going to tell that, but in, that's internal to us. EP textiles, not doing well current year. There are many regions, but now I come to the role of MSME sector and MSMEs, the focus today. So these are some narratives only, and uh, you know already, but I want to highlight one or two things. The capability of Indian MSME products to compete in international market is reflected 
in its share of about 45% in merchandise exports in the year 2021-22. And I have a caveat, and I'll come to that uh, later. In many of the forums, such uh, uh, occasions, people say this is the contribution of MSME sector. I'll tell you in a very short while that this is not the contribution because this, this contribution also include the large sector. So these are not exclusively for that. So I have done some homework for you people, my August uh, stakeholders, that how uh, we have distinguished uh, these uh, ITCHS codes, identified which are export uh, MSME related and which are MSME manufactured. This is something new, I'll throw light on it. Now, in initiatives for boosting uh, exports from MSME sector, these are the schemes, and most uh, uh, people are not aware of, but uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, the Ministry of MSME changed the definition that in the earlier slide I told that. Uh, so they are, uh, here the ministry's role, MSME ministry, has changed the criteria. So the main purpose was that, that uh, excluding exports by calculated turnover is encouraging the MSMEs to export more without fearing the need to forego the benefits of being an MSME. So this is a very important uh, thought over criteria was that. And uh, then uh, that also facilitated uh, the MSME exports. And, uh, and these are some of the, uh, um, you know, initiatives taken by the government in the recent past for boosting exports from the MSME sector. And uh, interest equalization scheme of DGFT now provides 3% interest rate on pre and post shipment credit to MSME manufacturing exporters. Uh, you know, this is uh, over this 2% rate to others. So these are some special schemes and now uh, a list of high export products have been identified from the list of 458 items exported, four digit HSN code by the MSMEs. Further analysis has been done to identify the most exported products at a six digit label and eight digit label to accurately identify the product that needs focus. I'll come to the data in a while. So after these uh, initiate, you know, the finance support provided under international cooperation scheme for technology infusion, upgradation of micro, small and medium enterprises their modernization and promotion of their exports through participation in international exhibitions, trade fairs, and then B2B portal, MSME, uh, all these uh, uh, facilitation centers like 52 export facilitation centers have been across the country has been established, hand-holding and mentoring purpose. Initiatives by government uh, to boost uh, MSME related export. The MSME related export, why I'm saying again and again, those 45% is not only exclusively MSME uh, exports, but these are, in, that includes also large sector. So there is no way we can, uh, you know, distinguish specifically, exclusively uh, ITCHS codes are reserved for MSME. Incentives have been provided for MSME manufacturing exporters under interest equalization scheme, I just uh, uh, told that, uh, and uh, this year we have got good budget for that. And the active role of Indian missions abroad towards promoting India's trade, tourism, and technology and investment goals have been enhanced. And it all started with uh, Prime Minister's big push uh, in last year, August. And based on this midterm review uh, 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 during uh, 2017 also, Incentives for labor intensive and MSME sectors were increased to promote exports from MSME or labor intensive sectors. So these are uh, very specific, uh, you know, uh, uh, incentives given. Now coming to data, the status, where we are now in the status of MSME related export. This is something you may kindly uh, note uh, that 454 items at four digit level out of total ITCHS course now 12, 18, have been identified by MSME ministry 
in coordination with the DGCIS and DGFT statistics division, which are related to MSME sector, related to MSME sector. The expo data for these items also include data for large sectors. India's MSME related export was 189 billion during 21-22 as compared to 143 billion during 2021, which is a hoping 31.9, 32% growth in MSME sector, you see. During April to December, that is current year, it was $147 billion as compared to $138 billion. Here also we have increased, but the concern is that, in comparison to last year, that the growth has decreased to 5.9%. The overall export growth was 9%, and this is 5.9%. That means somewhere MSME sector has lagged behind. The percentage share of MSME related export in the overall merchandise export during 21-22 is 45%, and for 22-23, it is slightly reduced. The share is 43.7%. So means, again, the big fish story is there. So there is a data limitation for compiling export data exclusively for MSME sector. I'm again and again telling because only I can say that. So the target setting or monitoring of MSME related export is not that straightforward. But we do that through uh, EPCs and uh, uh, commodity groups. And uh, this is just a snapshot of the uh, achievement uh, in the last three years. It is already explained. This is only the data. You can see the last one how we have 49.7, 49.3, 45.5, 45.5, 43.7. So some, uh, d during the last, uh, you know, it was uh, almost 45, but now it is little less and already explained. And these are some homework I have done for you. That is, uh, these are the top 12 commodities above 100 million dollar related to MSME during last three years and the current year. So here, the last one, you see the, the only these 12 uh, four-digit label, they contribute to 33.3% share. And now it has 34.2 uh, in the current year. And uh, so the growth story is in the last column, where uh, uh, there are certain sectors like uh, footwear, offer of leather, or the, at the four-digit level, I'm saying. 43% uh, uh, in uh, other uh, semi-precious stones and all that, a lot of that in the, uh, you know, MSME sector. And then 77% growth is there. That's very remarkable, 8517, that is electric application for line tech, telephony, including current line system. Uh, others are there, and detailed data is available in the Department of Commerce. Uh, you know, data bank, uh, these are all currently available. Now, related to MSME manufactured commodity, those are related and these are specifically manufactured and here 784 items at ITCH's eight digit level out of 12,177 have been identified by MSME ministry in coordination with the DGCIS and DGFT which are reserved for manufacturing in MSME sector. This is the reserve for manufacturing the MSME sector. So here also the growth story is 23.4% and uh, currently it has down to 8.6% but still at par with, uh, uh, you know, although the share is very minimal but it is at the par with the current growth in the overall export sector. The percentage share of manufacturing commodity exclusively for MSME sector during 21-22 is 7.7% and for the current year it is 6.7%, not much difference. And this is the snapshot of the summary data. And the percentage share in overall export, 8.7, 9.1, 7.7, now it's relatively reduced. Uh, so, of course, uh, this is a matter of concern. Uh, not that much, but still the stakeholders may kindly see how to boost the MSME exports and this type of forums will help for further churning and uh, brainstorming and how to go about it. 
and these are again the 12 manufacturing commodities, export of top 12 manufacturing commodities exclusively for M from MSME sector during the last three years and current year. And here the growth story in the last column where some sectors have done very well, some commodities, and these are all ITC, HS, eight digit. So these are the actually the commodities uh, in these sectors, like basmati rice. We have a growth of 40.3, and I, I think basmati rice is in the in MSME sector. And rice para boil um, is not very high, but you see the 85 chapter others, and uh, that is 44.6. 68 uh, is also in the footwear, rubber, plastics with upper leather. So here the handicrafts, uh, uh, MSME sector is growing well. And this is the uh, total contribution. And apart from now, my uh, almost the last slide, where uh, we have some assertions uh, that uh, despite a lot of global head beams, Ukraine-Russia conflict, DOC is confident that it will cross the overall export target for goods and services at around 760 billion, crossing the historic high of 676 billion in 2022-23. It is my assumption, I am again requesting, Sahasab, this is only my <laughs> assertion, it's not government view. So, and I, I subscribe to it, what I mean as official statistician, yes, we'll cross. But uh, 440 billion for goods against 470 provisional target, internal target set for us, set for ourselves. And 320 billion for services, this is the green spot where we are achieving more than, like last year it was merchandise and this year it was it is services trade. It is going to do marvels. And during April to January, yes, we have already said 369 billion of merchandise exports, over 340, registering 8.5%, and services registering rise of 24% this year. We have already achieved 272 billion till January, two months are to go. Overall exports during April to January was 641 billion over 547 billion. As Usunsa has already pointed out in the beginning, it's uh, really a good uh, and, uh, to marry about it and the rise of 17% in the overall. So if you rise at least in this way, we can achieve our target set for 2030 for the vision. The MSME related export during 21, as compared to 2021, registered a growth of 31.9%. I have already shown the data, and the current year rate is 59%, it's a matter of concern. The performance of MSME sector, here the, I give you the food for thought in today's meeting with the panelists, with you know, many topics, such interesting and very useful topics for this sector that has been introduced. and. Uh, and uh, you may kindly focus on these uh, aspects. The matter of concern, the uh, MSM sector manufacturing export is also down, but not that much, uh, 8.6. All stakeholders, including EPCs, FEO, all chambers of commerce, everybody, and the missions, of course, they have to come forward and achieve their things. Thank you. And already, just a passing remark, already pointed out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I request you to kindly stay back on stage. And can we have our editor, Mr. Roshan Poeya, back on the stage to present, sir, with a small token of appreciation. Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a huge round of applause for our chief guest? Uh, my name is Ashton Sharma. I'm former director from Ministry of MSME. My first request to you is, can you make available the copy of this, uh, your presentation? Number one. Number two, on 9th February of this year, there was a big Indian conclave on MSME in Lalit Hotel, where our minister and the secretary and everybody was present. And one MOU was signed between the DGFT and uh, Joint uh, Development Commissioner of MSME Government of India. The purpose of that, MSM, uh, that uh, MOU 
when I ask what are the purpose of this MOU, how it will help uh, to increase the export of services and uh, commodity from the MSME sector. Unfortunately, that could not be shared. Abhi unho ne bola ke abhi to aaj sign hi kiya hai, abhi work out karenge kya kaise kiya jata hai. So my request to you is, unless, and the purpose is that those who are uh, from MSME exporting unit and the importing unit, unless the data and the product and the name of the, the is shared with the uh, different association, small in, particularly small industry association, not the key and association who was a big industry. So my question, since you are looking after this uh, uh, data, this thing, so for example, in Haryana, last month they have uh, made uh, export uh, uh, promotion council under the leadership of Mr. Bakshi, who was an uh, additional secretary from government of India. So they are, you know, going from district to district for creating awareness how to export. But when we approach not anybody, MSME unit, that you can export, you can also get a big dollar in the country. Then his question is, what do I export? What do I export in which country? How much quantity is it? When I was there in the government of India long back, we used to get uh, information from 200 um, basic, uh, commercial attache and then we used to analyze and then share with uh, these uh, small industry. Unke saath baithte the, unko promote karte the, help karte the. That is why ye jo aaj aaj figure bata rahe hain, ye uska pranam hai ki aaj itni badi figure hai 40 percent ye. What's your question, please, so, sir? Please. My Other question, abhi aapne abhi question. Pehla to mera ye ki isko aap share kariye. Dusra, wo jo MOU है वो कैसे उसको होगा उसे हमें कुछ डिटेल पता लगेंगे कहाँ से पता लगाएं कैसे पता लगाएं कैसे शेयर करें ओके आई टेक योर क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट वन आई हैव ऑलरेडी दिस कैन बी शेयर नथिंग रॉंग अबाउट इट बट फर्स्ट थिंग सो द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स आई लुकेस देम टू शेयर इफ दे वांट इट इज देयर नो now second thing about the data i can say about the mou i am not much aware of because on 9 february and many occasions we do have interaction but the specific mou you are talking about i am not aware of it with the dgft so second regarding the data you are talking about those days when data were available from each ministry sorry embassies 200 commissions missions and all that i can tell assure this august gathering I request you kindly go through four data source. Everything is available online. Whatever is possible is available online. At aggregate level, at two-digit level, four-digit level, six-digit level, eight-digit level, all country, all commodity, quick estimates, principal commodity level of 168 commodities, all data are available in the Department of Commerce doc.gov, commerce.gov.in. The data bank is there, it is for you to encash, number one. Number two, in DGFT website, there are statistical reports. There is a bulletin of statistical, monthly bulletin of foreign trade statistics. All these contributions I have done, so that's why I assure you that I'll do more. And uh, this is available, there are two dashboards one dashboard is called monitoring dashboard. In the front page of DOC, Department of Commerce, you will see the dashboard where you will get entire data. Again, to some extent, average version because dashboard is very specific purpose. But the entire data is available in the dashboard, uh, sorry, in the data bank. Then there is a monitoring dashboard and there is a exim analytics and uh, of DGCIS. In addition to that, there is a data dissemination portal where yesterday we had a meeting and I was telling about what kind of district level export data available. Our secretary was surprised to know all this data we have built up from April 21. All the data are publicly available in the GGCI, in my dashboard as well as in the DGCIS data dissemination portal where you have to log in. That's all. And you can get the district-wise data for all the uh, 658 districts out of this uh, district as a sport hub uh, identified 734 districts. 
658 district data are available. Which data going from which district, which country, which commodity, and to, through which port, all these are available. And at the uh, granule, uh, granular level, and that's the insistent from PMO, uh, Prime Minister office, we built up that after a lot of, you know, initial teething problems of data generation. So data are there. Now, you know data is the oil of, the, of your industry, of any industry. So this is all statistics has got its prominence uh, in the recent years uh, uh, after liberalization because of that. So all evidence, all policy, everything is no more opinion-based. All foreign trade policy and uh, schemes have come only with the evidence-based, uh, uh, you know, planning. So that's why data are there. You kindly see that if you have any, I had given my uh, email address. Uh, if anybody wants, uh, although I, I have been a little too busy in recent years, but surely I will try to uh, uh, answer your query of your data requirement. Thank you very much. Sir. Sir, quick question, a uh, short one. Um, we feel as exporters that the linkage of data between customs and DGFT can be greatly improved because there is still a lot of paperwork that has to be exchanged when you get an advanced license submitted to customs, when you complete your export obligation submitted back to DGFT. What are the plans for simplifying and automating all that yeah. so they're talking directly to each other? Thank you very much. This is a very good question and uh, relevant to all, all of you, those who are in the... Uh, Mr. Ajay Sai is there and he is very much aware of uh, that to general uh, few. See, DGFT has undergone a very massive, uh, you know, change that we call the IT revamping scheme. Under that, uh, I think uh, maybe uh, one or two cases, pairing cases are there, but the data linkage between CBIC, Customs, uh, IceGate, and uh, uh, DGFT has already established, has been established. Most of the export obligation or other things are going on, but still uh, there are certain hindrances uh, because of the past problem, the past data, because you know EPCG and advanced authorization, the export obligation, uh, it is registered based earlier. Now, all of a sudden, we came to uh, this. The new issue of export obligation yeah, certificate, uh, uh, you know, okay. But for the old, uh, which are pending from 2000 onwards also, some cases, for that, uh, the linkage uh, has some problem. But for that, we do go for a decentralized system of the server of the uh, regional of, uh, authorities of DGFT. But still, for export obligation uh, and with DC, you know, there are certain issues for the past data. But the, currently, even the license are issued and uh, even the uh, export obligation uh, for the recent past, uh, if the EO period has not expired, these are going on smoothly. If the, any specific problems are there, then my friends and you can discuss and uh, you can, uh, we have a help desk uh, in DGFT and uh, that can be done and you are welcome anytime to have interaction with us. With this, uh, I thank you all and the organization, organizers, media for inviting me and uh, giving me the opportunity to, to say something about statistics and SMA exports. Thank you very much.